Hey there guys, how you doing and welcome to another one of my uh, Astro Guide um, processing videos. Now in this video here I'm going to show you how you can stack um, your uh, Nightscape images. Not just the sky but sky and foreground together in a very very simple method using a free program that you can uh, you can all go download um, providing you are a PC user. Um, this is not a, a Mac um, software. So if you're a PC user, you can head over to uh, a website called uh, Sequator. I will um, put the link in the uh, descriptions to make it a bit easier for you to um, to go find. And as I said, this is an absolutely free free software, stacking software. And uh, I've been using it for uh, just a little while now. Um, I did hear about it and I did jump on it straight away because it takes out a lot of the, uh, the hassles of uh, the old Photoshop ways. Um, so uh, let's get uh, straight to it. Now, I've got five images here. Um, you may not. We'll do it like this. All right. So I've got a dual monitor sort of set up when it comes to processing my videos. Uh, so on the other screen, I've got um, my film strip as such with my images, but we've just brought it down the bottom so you can see. Okay, so I've got my five images here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a uh, a slight um, edit uh, to the image. So it's a little bit dark, so I might just pump, or just uh, increase the exposure just a little bit, maybe bring down the, the highlights, just a fraction, uh, increase my shadows up a bit. Um, and then I will head down to my lens corrections and I'm going to add um, some uh, vignette there just to try and uh, remove the uh, light fall off um, and that is all I'm really going to do uh, for settings wise this image was taken at ISO 10,000 with a 14-24 f2.8 lens 25 second exposure probably could have brought it down to about 20 second exposure if I really wanted those stars super round um, and uh, and that's it. And as you can see, they've all been copied. Um, all my settings have been uh, copied to every single image because they're all um, selected and highlighted. So uh, well, um, everything that I've done here in uh, my panels have uh, all been copied across to the others. So all I'm going to do now is um, export this image. We'll export all five images, sorry, and then we're going to uh, open up uh, Sequator and um, and start the uh, stacking side of things. Um, it does take a little bit to export here because they're all very very large um, files. And we'll take out a Nikon D810A, and once they've um, been exported into TIFF, they're about 200 meg um, each file. So now that says now sorry now that that's done um all we're going to do is just minimize uh lightroom and uh and i've got sequator um already uh opened up here now it was a little bit tricky to uh to start off with um using this uh software but uh, i did um did work it out in the end and i'm um, getting um you know nice results from it the uh, plus to this is that you also can stack um, deep space images if you wish to um, with this software too. So it's um, it's quite handy and the fact that it's free is just an absolute bonus. So um, thank you to the uh, the people that, who have developed um, this software and made it easier for us astrophotographers. Um, it's always a, it's always a pleasure when. Uh, you get a passionate astrophotographer who knows how to write software and does something like this. So um, yeah, it's always a always a big uh, big help. But uh, anyway, let's get straight to it. So all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to skip base image and I'm just going to go straight to uh, star images. So it's file and star images, and here are the images here in uh, my folder um, which I exported. As you can see, and uh, I just um, called the folder uh, Sequator. So I'm going to import all my five images into the software, and as you can see, uh, the images here, and all five images are loaded up under Star Images. 
noise images. I don't have any, I uh, didn't take any noise images, um, any dark images as such. Um, and uh, vignette images, which is also um, flat frames, which I did not do. But as you can see with noise um, slash dark images and vignette slash, you know, flat frames, you can uh, stack some uh, deep space stuff if you're uh, keen in doing that. Um, or if you've just taken some uh, shots with of the Milky Way, you know, five or ten shots of the Milky Way on your tripod, um, and you uh, and you do decide to do some flat frames and some dark frames and stuff like that, and uh, you know this software can do it all for you. But uh, now that they're loaded, um, what I need to do is uh, select an output, um, basically a. Uh, a where I want, um, once this image has all been stacked, where I want it to be automatically saved to. Okay, so um, I'm just going to keep it in this one folder, but I'm just going to uh, just name it stacked. Alright, and hit save. Okay, so now we've got a green light there. So we are all good. Um, as you can see, the um, base image is automatically uh, sort of selected. To se sorry, <laughs> it's already selected. So that's why I... Uh, um, I only worry about the star images here uh, when you go to file, star images. Okay. Hopefully, I haven't confused you and we're still good to go. So, we're going to move on to the next star, uh, next panel, which is the one below it. Okay. And all I'm going to do here is come down to freeze ground. Okay. And as the box says, both sky and ground can be stacked but still kept sharp. Okay, must um, specify the sky mask to get better quality. Um, useful uh, only if more than three input images. Okay, and we've got five. So, all right. So our freeze ground is, uh, is selected there, and as we can see, we've got a red dot for our sky region. Okay. Now this is the part where we select our sky and separate the sky from the foreground. Well, tell the program we're going to be. This is our sky. What's left is our foreground and um, you do your thing. Okay, so I'm going to be selecting a regular mask. Okay, so what a regular mask it means is that I can paint it all in. Okay, and it's this simple. As soon as you've uh, selected a regular mask, I can come across and my cursor changes to the circle with a crosshair in it and all I'm going to do is start painting. Okay, and as you can see these lines here that go throughout the whole image, I'm just painting them out revealing just the sky, okay? That's all I'm doing. Uh, and then if you want to make your um, paintbrush as such bigger or smaller, just use the uh, the mouse um, wheel. Okay, so I'm just make it a bit smaller. And I'm just going to Try and paint in a bit more closer to my foreground. Being reasonably careful that I don't go into my foreground. Something like that. But uh, let's just say you do go into your foreground like that. All you do is you hold your uh, right mouse button down and you can just paint it back out again. Whoops. Okay, just something like that. All right, so it's left left mouse button to paint in and then right mouse button to paint it back out, okay? All right, once that's done, um, auto brightness, I don't touch, high dynamic range. What are you doing to me here? I turn on. Okay, normally you can just um, double click. Okay, so high dynamic range turn on, remove dynamic noises off, everything else is pretty much off. Um, and my color space is just a sRGB. Alright, so let's just quickly recap. Um, I've just imported my star images, which you can see here, and I've told it where I wanted it to save to by selecting an output and I named it stacked. Okay, I've gone through here and I've selected freeze uh, freeze ground and aligned stars. I've painted in 
my sky okay and left my foreground I then have high dynamic range turned on and I click start all right and the great thing about this too is it's quite quick as well so uh, as you can see we're you know getting up to about 10 seconds now um, you know and it doesn't really take that long compared to some of my deep space images which have taken uh, forever to stack so there we go 20 seconds it's done I'm gonna hit close and fingers crossed there we go we've got a nice stacked uh, sky and a stacked foreground as well all right so uh, shall we look at this in a little bit more detail just to see how well the stackings worked so what we're going to do is I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to bring Lightroom back up and I'm going to find my image my stacked image and I want to select all them stacked image so I'm going to import that there um, and here we go okay so there's my my stacked image all right now let's compare it to an unstacked image so just that one there as you can see there's a, there's a little bit of a difference already but let's have a look at uh, this cliff here big difference big big difference all right let's have a look at uh let's have a look at some stars shall we see about there get about there big difference look at that so much so much cleaner and uh and from then on you can just um go about your uh processing um ways in, in producing um, and adding your uh, your style and uh, your style to your uh, Nightscape photographs so um, I hope you've uh, you've enjoyed this uh, this processing video um, if you uh, if you want to see more videos like this uh, including my um, my adventures I go on um, hit that subscribe button um, every subscribe is extremely welcomed and uh, and it just in helps helps encourage me even to uh, to sort of uh, produce even more of these sort of videos for you guys if you uh, find them very helpful um, if you uh, if you just want to uh, shout out and give me a, a like and a, and a comment um, maybe you know, suggest uh, some other videos that you might like to see in regards to um, astrophotography. Um, I will be doing some uh, adventure videos with uh, astrophotography, photographing some uh, deep space stuff. So, um, with all that being said, um, until next time, take it easy, guys. See ya.